All right, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel. And once again, it's another video, and it comes to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bar Shem, Yahweh Shai Bar Shem, Rakar Kodash. All praises and glories definitely do. So I'm going to call this video Repair and Restore. Repair and Restore. And um, this has to do with the nation of Israel, beginning with the elect. We're living in a time where the Heavenly Father, which his name is Yahweh, and his son's name is Yahweh Shai, is repairing and restoring the nation of Israel, beginning with the elect, by giving us this knowledge, this truth. And um, this is a response to this video I was watching. I uh, watched a little bit more of it because yesterday on our way to camp Elder Pastor said or Elder Pastor rather asked us if we could pull up this video and we played in the car on our way down to the camp and it was this video right here rally for reparations official film and this was put up by Tariq Radio which Tariq Radio is owned by Tariq Nasheed, which is a popular YouTuber. Now, this event happened on November 5th, 2022, which was a few weeks ago. And, um, you know, it was a, a collage, if you will, of different speakers, a group of different speakers, you know, making speeches, and they all have to do with reparations, which is... Um, which is a term meaning, uh, how do I say this? Um, besides money, which is mostly money, uh, Tariq Nasheed feels that the so-called blacks here in America, predominantly them, the so-called blacks in America, he, he has something called a foundational black Americans also known as FBA, Foundational Black Americans. And he feels that um, during slavery, which is the truth, that they were cheated out of many things because after all, they were slaves. So since we've, we've, uh, slavery is so-called abolished, which that's not the truth, slavery is not abolished. What the top wicked banking families did, which they've always had a hand in our slavery, going back to the the uh, Borgia family. The Borgia family had slaves, which was our people. And then later the Rothschild family, which the Rothschilds, they came on the scene around the 1700s. Okay, when Mayam Shalbao changed his name to Mayam Shal Rothschild. And uh, pretty much they... Um, Uh, they came on the scene around the 1700s. And going going back before that, you had the banking families back then during the time of the 1600s, the 1500s, the 1600s, descendants of the Borgia family that had a hand in, in the slave trade. In particular, the small hatters, the ones that you know as the, the so-called Jews today, all right, the Ish people. You know, they had a, major hand in our slavery as a matter of fact the uh, slave ships the majority of them were financed by the small hatters and do you know and i did a video on this do you know that there are insurance companies that are still thriving today in america that got their start from slavery and maybe i might do that video again okay i think new york life was one one of those insurance agencies if i remember correctly like i said i did a video on that that information a few months back okay um different etna etna was one of um is because etna is still around you know they had the commercial etna etna i'm glad i met you that was their 
you know, every commercial has that tagline to sell the product. Well, that was their tagline. I don't know what it is now, but not too long ago, their tagline for the commercial was, Etna, I'm glad I met you. <clears throat> well, Etna, uh, when you check out their history, Etna helped finance the slaves back then. Okay? So the point is, these huge insurance corporations, a lot of them got their start from our, you know, the slave trade, our misery, okay? So here they are making billions and billions of dollars and the majority of our people are, are still poor. So you have this guy, Tariq Nasheed, who's leading the charge for so-called black Americans to get their piece of the pie, so to speak. He calls it reparations. Now the thing is, where we differ, now we don't say, when I say we, we had Great Millstone beginning with Elder Pastor on down. We don't say that we shouldn't get reparations. Absolutely, we should get reparations. But the kind of reparations, which the word repair comes from reparations, or rather reparations come from the word repair, to, really to fix. The Bible, the, the kind of reparations the Bible is talking about is enslaving those that enslaved us. That's real reparations. That's what the Bible is talking about. And that's what the majority of our people don't get. That's what they can't understand. Okay? You even have some of our people, when we tell them that, according to the scriptures, that the ones who enslaved us, that they're going to be enslaved, they say, well, that ain't right. That means we'll be just like them. They just don't get it, man. Number one, we're the Lord's chosen people. We're royal people. That's pursuant to Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Now, royal people have slaves, man. Royal people have subjects. So when the kingdom is instituted, the kingdom of Yahweh Shai, which that's why Yahweh Shai is coming back to destroy this kingdom and set up his kingdom on the planet Earth. Now, by default, his kingdom, Yahweh Shai's kingdom, will be the kingdom of Israel. Now, when that's instituted, all the other nations that enslaved us during one period or another, you know, um, like the Babylonians, the uh, Egyptians, the Medo Persians, etc., the Greeks, which are now the Romans, okay? Um, the, we're in the modern day Roman Empire, which are really Edomites. All these nations, and this is pursuant to the scriptures in the Bible, all these nations are going to be enslaved by us because they had us in slavery. And that's what the Bible is talking about. That is real reparations. The kind of reparations that Tariq Nasheed and all those other speakers that showed up during his rally, the kind of reparations they're talking about is mostly getting a huge chunk of money from Esau, which you're not going to get. Esau doesn't, number one, Esau doesn't have the money. That's number one. Number two, uh, the Bible tells us not to trust in uncertain riches. What you look at as money from Esau, right? That's being devalued by the second, okay? Because they're making, they're getting ready to abolish the paper dollar bill, right? And they're going to a higher form of control because that's why they created the paper dollar bill. By the way, they created it out of thin air. Uh, thin air. All you have to do is go into the history of Jekyll Island and what happened there when you had the uh, the Federal Reserve Act that was being put together on Jekyll Island by the top banking families of the day, members of the top banking families, okay? Uh, the reason why it was put together, the Federal Reserve Act, which later became law, was to basically control the people's finances and at the same time devalue their money, right? Devalue their money to the point where what we have today is an electronic device being instituted, or I should say in, um, inserted, that's what I wanted to say, not instituted, but, well, institute is a good word too, but a better word is um, inserted, okay? And that goes back to the Greek word chiragma, which means a thing inserted. So what they want to do is insert an, an electronic device, and on that electronic device, 
will be your 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 so called uh, your so called money. It will be in the form of electronic money, credits and debits. But what that does for the bankers is is bring them even more control. Because that's what it's all about with them, control. That's why the Federal Reserve was created back in 1913. Actually, it started in 1910 in Jekyll Island. All you have to do is do the research. An excellent individual to look, look up uh, concerning that information is Eustace Mullins and his book, Secrets of the Federal Reserve. Eustace Mullins and his book, which I had the book. I don't know what the hell happened to it. It's got to be around here somewhere. But in that book, I've actually read parts of the book, and, and it's very explicit. Yeah, it names dates, names, places, okay, of certain events over the years that was created so that eventually they could create this, <coughs> they could create this um, Federal Reserve uh, organization of which out of that organization came the Federal Reserve note okay which is supposed to be a government institution but it's not it's a private it's a private banking institution owned by the top banking families starting with the Rothschild family okay so <clears throat> once you learn why it was created the the sinister purpose of why it was created and how it was created in secrecy you know tight secrecy man okay once you learn that then you understand that Tariq Nasheed is asking for reparations in the form of monies what 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 are we supposed to get federal reserve notes those things are being devalued by the second and what is the ultimate ultimatum that they want to bring once that once those dollar bills are, are done away with once they're no good once this fiat currency look up the term fiat f-i-a-t that's what really what it is once this fiat currency is destroyed what 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 will replace it right what will replace it well like i like i told you the electronic tag the c-h-i-p all right, the C hip. And that goes back to the prophecy in Revelation 13 and 16. He calls if all both small and great, rich and poor, to receive a bond or to receive a mark in their, their right hand or their foreheads. So it's the ultimate form of control. Even when um even when Aaron Russo, and and I always use this as reference. You know, the conversation between Aaron Russo and Nick Rockefeller, which Aaron Russo disclosed on Alex Jones's uh, program. He did an interview with Alex Jones shortly before he passed away. Aaron Russo. Aaron Russo was famous for the movie Trading Places, on, on, which I believe either he produced it or he directed or both. Um, he made a statement to... Alex Jones of what he heard from Nick Rockefeller, his friend, which the Rockefellers, I did some research on them and found out that they were, that they are actually scions, that's S-C-I-O-N, look that word up, scion of, uh, and this is going to be, uh, this video is going to be uh, set as a premiere, so you'll be able to follow on, on the comment board as the video is playing. <clears throat> um, the, the Rockefellers were scions of the Rothschild family. Okay, so what they did was they changed their name to Rockefeller. So the, in, in, initially, they're, they're uh, Rothschilds. Okay, so uh, Nick Rockefeller, which became friendly with Aaron Russo, they became friends. Uh, Nick Rockefeller actually liked Aaron Russo, you know. Aaron Russo said that, and Nick Rockefeller felt the need to tell him some secrets. And what Nick Rockefeller told him was, look, we want everyone C-H-I-P-P-E-D. We want everyone tagged with an electronic tag. And what that does for the top banking families is to control. Because remember, they got a God complex. 
If you go in the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel uh, 28, let's go to that real quick. Ezekiel 28 and 1, it says, The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, his name is Yahweh, because thine heart is lifted up, and that's Esau. Another scripture that lines up with that is the book of Obadiah, where it speaks about the pride of thine heart have deceived thee. So this man is immensely proud. And another scripture that highlights his pride is Psalm 49 and 11, where it says, the inward, thought, the inward thought of Esau is that their houses shall continue forever. Meaning this devil, uh, Esau, this devil thinks that he's never going down, that, that there'll never be an end uh, to his kingdom, that he'll rule, he'll rule forever. And that's simply not so. Every kingdom that came on the planet Earth, they had their period of time to rule, and eventually they were brought down. And it's no different with Esau, Edom. We're living in a time where the kingdom of Esau, Edom is being brought down. And the kingdom of Israel will replace it, which by default is the kingdom of Yahweh Shai. And that's when we're, getting, we're going to get our true reparations. But a lot of our people, they don't understand that. Tariq Nasheed being one of them. A lot of our people are very impatient. Even in the book of Baruch, right? The fourth chapter, the Lord told us to suffer patiently the wrath he has brought upon us. And he brought that wrath upon us for our disobedience as his chosen people. That's why we're on the bottom. That's why every other nation progresses, even right here in Babylon, Babylon the Great, which is known as America. So, you know, it's known as Babylon the Great in the Bible. That's why every nation progresses over us because we're under a series of curses for our disobedience. So anyone who's talking about getting reparations from Esau, they don't understand these scriptures. They don't understand the prophecy in this Bible. The Lord is about to give us real reparations, not no devalued Federal Reserve note that's being devalued by the second. That's not, that's not real reparations. Okay? That's not real reparations. Esau cannot give us reparations. Our reparations are going to come from Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai. And that's where faith comes in. Now we know that the majority of this nation is a faithless nation, faithless people. Constantly, Yahweh Shai used to say, O ye of little faith. Our people have very little faith. And that's why it's all about the elect, the elect of the nation of Israel. That's why we, in particular Great Millstone and our affiliates, all we're concerned with is the elect of the nation of Israel. Okay, because they have the right kind of temperament for what the Heavenly Father is saying concerning reparations. Okay? So, again... Ezekiel 28 and 2, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up. And that's talking about Esau. And thou hast said, I am a God. See, I sit in the seat of God in the midst of the seas, which is a metaphor for the people. Yet thou art a man and not God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. So eventually Esau is going to be taken down and their kingdom is going to be destroyed. And that's what Yahweh Shai is coming to do. That's why the scriptures say, yet thou art not a God and nothing but a man. Okay, and it's only going to take Yahweh Shai one hour to destroy this man's kingdom. One hour, as it is written, for in one hour so great riches is come to naught. The riches of Esau, all the riches that he made off our misery, off our slavery, enslavement, stealing our resources, stealing us as a resource. All right stealing our land like like they did from our brothers the so-called North American Indians the tribe of Gad yeah real reparations is coming back and they're gonna have to pay for every last ounce of wickedness that they did and that is totally scriptural all right so without further ado as you clearly see here I've put together some scriptures dealing with reparations what the Heavenly Father have said in the scriptures concerning reparations but before I read that, let's just play a little bit. This is where uh, Tariq Nasheed has been, has been introduced. And he, he comes and he, he gives a speech, so to speak. 
And again, it's dealing with reparations. This took place in Washington, D.C., November 5th, 2022, which was a few weeks ago. So without further ado, let's take a listen to what he has to say, and then we're going to filter what he said through the scriptures. All right, so on that note, let's get into it. So that's Tariq Nasheed right there. And he's about to give his speech. He's a popular YouTuber, by the way. Um, uh, as, as a matter of fact, um, an elder pastor was telling us, he uh, actually worked in tandem with Michael Moore, which Michael Moore is a, a famous uh, documentary movie maker, Michael Moore. Okay, so without further ado, let's get into it. So I had to go run up and check. I got the message on me. Get no flexing on me. My attorney gon' call it collect. Blessings on blessings for me. My success is only made of envious. They got upset. I had to put all their egos in check. I went to money to The home of Frederick Douglass. So apparently, only the people with an IQ over 180 can solve this. DC, the home of Dick Gregory? The home of Marion Barry. The home of Dame Chappelle. The home of Mambo Sauce. What y'all putting in that Mambo Sauce? DC, we're here. The rally for reparations. Look at this beautiful crowd. Give yourselves a round of applause. Now, family. It's a couple of days before midterms. We're letting the political structure know we want tangibles as foundation of black Americans. And we're not going to let them redefine what reparations mean, right? Is reparations student loan debt? Is reparations HBCU funding? Is reparations minority business loans? No. Is reparations catfish nuggets? No. What's reparations? Money! Money. What's reparations? Money. What's reparations? Money. Now you heard what the people said. Money, money. The majority of these people in the audience have no idea what real money is. Okay, they're, they're immediately they're thinking of Federal Reserve notes. And like I said at the beginning of this lesson, the Federal Reserve note is being devalued by the second. They're making way to do away with it and replacing it with that electronic device known as the C-HIP, the chip, okay, which is also known as the MOTB, pursuant to Revelation 13 and 16. And many of those people in the audience, they're going to take that C-H-I-P, and that's going to be to their detriment. That's going to be to their destruction. That's the book of Revelation 14 and 8, all right? As a matter of fact, let me get that. <clears throat> and that's why it's a blessing to know the real truth, the 100% truth, which is only given to the elect of the nation of Israel anyway. Okay? The majority of our people have been blinded to the truth, man. That's Isaiah 6 and 9, uh, Revelation 11 and 7. You can read those, both those scriptures. And like I always say in these lessons, you should be writing down these scriptures, especially those of you that are new and you're hearing this, this word for the first time. You should be writing down these scriptures. <laughs> you should be reading your Bible inside joke. You should be writing down these scriptures so you can reference them later. That's how we learned. When I first came into the knowledge, my notebooks were filled with scriptures, filled with notes right next to the scripture so I could remember the breakdown of that scripture, the understanding of it. And over the years, I've gone through these scriptures so many times, it becomes a part of me. It becomes a part of you. You can damn near quote the scripture in your sleep. Okay? And that's really what this, these words are supposed to be ingrained in us. Okay? We're supposed to become like the word. You know, Yahweh one of his titles was the word. Okay? He was a, a, a walking man, manifestation of the word, Yahweh Okay. By the way, he's the one bringing us real reparations. Yahweh Shai. 
But many of our people, they're not trying to wait for Yahweh Shai. They say, nah, I, mean, they, I don't believe in no Yahweh Shai. I'm going to get, this, we're going to go to the so-called white man. We're going to demand our reparations. <laughs> you jakes are crazy, man. And this, another thing, too, that this is this man's kingdom. This is the Edomite kingdom. Okay? You're nothing but a slave. You don't deserve no, I don't care how he's treated you. Okay? I don't care how he's treated you. As a matter of fact, the Heavenly Father used them as a whipping stick to whip our people. King David said, deliver me from the wicked, which is thy sword. The wicked is Esau, Edom. We're in his kingdom. We're nothing but slaves in his kingdom. So in, a, in reality, he don't deserve us. He, he don't owe us a damn thing. Okay, in reality, he don't owe us shit because it's his time to rule. All right? It's his time to rule. Okay? Now, when he's brought down now by Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, then we're going to rule over him. And guess what? We're going to uh, take our vengeance off of him. Okay? That's how it works. That's how this thing goes. Okay? Anyway, Revelation 14. So technically, like I said, and I'll say it again, I, that might be controversial what I just said, but Esau really don't owe us nothing. Okay? He, he doesn't owe us anything because this is his kingdom. And yes, he enslaved us. Yes, he took everything from us. You know why? Because the Heavenly Father used him to punish us. So now in the kingdom, the Heavenly Father is going to use us to punish him and all the other nations. Okay, that's how this thing works. Plus, we're the Heavenly Father's chosen people anyway, so it's going to be a perpetual punishment against Esau and the other nations. As a matter of fact, after a thousand years, Esau is going to be done away with, according to the Bible, according to uh, Bible prophecy. Okay, after a thousand years of serving us in hardcore slavery, Esau is going to be done away with. All right? So, Revelation 14 and 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast, what's the beast? The Roman Empire, which this man's kingdom, this Edomite's kingdom, is fashioned after the Roman Empire. Okay? The Roman Empire, America is nothing but a modern day version of the Roman Empire. That's all it is. And there's so many similarities to the Roman Empire, it's not even funny. So that's the beast, all right? If any man worship the beast and his image, what's, what, what is his image? This so-called New World Order that he's trying to bring. Look at the back of the dollar bill. The so-called dollar bill. Dollar of what? A lot of people, the majority of people in that audience, right? If you ask them what is the true definition of the word dollar, they wouldn't be able to tell you. They don't know about real money. A dollar is a unit of measurement. Now, the so-called one dollar bill, what is, what is it a measurement of? It's not backed by anything. It's not backed by gold or silver. At one time it was. They actually had the message on the paper. This certificate is redeemable in gold or silver. You had your gold certificates, you had your silver certificates. You could actually take it to the treasury and get an, an ounce, an ounce, a troy ounce of gold or a troy ounce of silver. You can't do that now. They took the, they took the promise right off the, the, uh, the, the paper money, which is further proof that, it, that it's useless. It's not, it's, <laughs> there's no value to it. The only value is psychological. The, the, the value that's on it right now is the belief that people have in it that it's money. But it's not real money. This is why it is written in the scriptures to trust ye not in uncertain riches. But here's Tariq Nasheed standing on stage saying, what we want? Money. What we want? Money. This is why the Lord said that he's, his people are foolish. They're sottish children. Sottish means stupid. Okay. And that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this video. So you can learn a, a, what real reparations is all about. But it takes faith for you to believe that you're going to get it. And many of our people don't have faith, man. They lack faith. But anyway, and the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark. What is the mark? The chiragma. When you go into the uh, Greek word there for Revelation 13, 16, you'll see the, the word mark in the English. When you go into Greek, the Greek word there is chiragma, which means a thing inserted. That's where the top wicked banking elite, bank elite is going with this thing. 
after they do away with the paper dollar bill. We're living in that time now. All that needs to happen is a major crisis, or whatever it may be, and the so-called dollar bill will be obsolete. They, they've even made movies that would show you this. The movie I Am Legend, there's a scene where um, Will Smith is chasing his dog because his dog runs into this abandoned building where, they, where the zombies were, and Will Smith was afraid of his dog being affected or infected, and he chased, he chased the dog into the building, and as he's walking through the building, and, you know, it's kind of dark, pitch black, trying to find his dog, uh, there's a scene where they show you this bank and the vault door is open. And if you look, if you watch carefully, there's a, a, a series of paper dollar bills, Federal Reserve notes strewn all over the floor, all over the ground. OK. So, what, 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 you know, a lot of these movies are made as um, messages to those that are in the know. You know, a lot of these movies are made as messages to those that are in the know. So what was that message there? Well, to those that are in the know, they're letting you know the day is coming when these dollar bills will be worthless, useless. Okay? But here's Tariq Nasheed standing on the stage talking about money. <laughs> what we want? Money! See? This is why the Lord said, who is blind... As a matter of fact, we're going to come back to Revelation. Let's go to Isaiah 42 real quick. Isaiah 42. Talking about these people, man. That's why we had great millstone. The only people we care about is the elect. The elect of the nation of Israel. Okay? Because the majority of our people, they're gone. Jeremiah, what is that? Jeremiah 5 and 23. Matter of fact, I'll read that next because that will line up perfectly with this scripture. Isaiah 42 and 9 and uh, 18. Hear ye deaf <laughs> and look ye blind that ye may see. You see, this is the Heavenly Father speaking through the prophet Isaiah. He's speaking to our people, beginning with so-called Negro all the way down to so-called Mexican. He said, Hear ye deaf and look ye blind that ye may see. Who is blind but my servant or deaf as my messenger that I sent? Who is blind as he that is perfect? That's you Israelites out there. And blind as the Lord's servant, seeing many things, but thou observest not. Like I gave you an example with, uh, with the message the wicked elite was sending to each other in that movie. A lot of people look at it as, oh, it's a movie for entertainment. No, but there were serious messages within the movie of things to come. Okay? And that was one example. Clearly in the movie, they show you that the days are coming when these dollar bills will be totally obsolete. Now what? Now what kind of reparations are you going to get now? You see? So clearly you're starting to see that that talk of reparations is silly. Okay? Real reparations comes from the Heavenly Father through His only begotten Son. And when I read these scriptures here that I have towards the right of, the, of your screen, you'll see that, man. If, if, if the Holy Spirit is working with you and if you've been blessed with the gift of faith, Seeing many things, but thou observest not. Opening the ears, but he heareth not. See? Now let's get Jeremiah. Like I said earlier, these people are gone, right? Well, this is the book of Jeremiah 5 and 23. All right, 5 and 23. But this people, talking about Israelites, man. The, the, the people that were right there in D.C. listening to Tariq Nasheed. Okay? Listening to Tariq Nasheed, the people that were standing there listening to him, the majority of them were Israelites, the Lord's people. And this is what the Lord said about his people. Jeremiah 5 and 23. But this people have a revolting and rebellious heart. They are revolted and gone. See? So they refuse to turn back to Yahweh Shem Shai. If they would turn back to Yahweh Shem Shai, they would learn about true reparations. But rather, they rather listen to a guy who's nine times out of ten connected, connected with the wicked elite. I'm talking about Tariq Nasheed. They rather listen to him spout his his failed rhetoric, <laughs> failed rhetoric of reparations, because that's exactly what it is: failed rhetoric. All right. 
<laughs> That's exactly what it is. That is not your salvation, you Israelites out there. Reparations from your slave master. Real reparations is real reparations is having him as your slave, just like he had you as his slave. Let me show you that. Reve uh, re the book of Revelation 13, 9 and 10. Okay, that is real reparations. That's what the Bible is talking about. The book of Revelation 13, 9 and 10. It says this. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity, like Esau led us into captivity, slavery, right? There's no denying that, right? You know, you've seen the uh, paintings, the icons, all right, the slave ships, okay? He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. So this man is going into captivity underneath us. Now that's real reparations. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword, right? Didn't they massacre us with the sword? Yes, they did. Okay? And not just the so-called black man, really all the tribes suffered at the hands of Esau and their brutality, their wickedness. So Esau is going to get a payback, man. Okay? He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the... Now check this out. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Now, a lot of people don't have faith. A lot of people don't believe that the ones that enslave us, we're going to enslave them. A lot of our people, most of those people there at, at, who went to listen to Tariq Nasheed, they don't believe that. They don't believe that the Heavenly Father has the power to bring this man down. I'm talking about Esau, Edom, and raise us up. Raise us up to the point where we enslave them like they enslaved us. And the phone had to chime on that one. How about that? But that's exactly what we, we're going to get. The, 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 the elect of the nation of Israel, we, we understand, we believe and understand that. We know what real reparations is. Here's the, here's the patience. That, see? So it takes patience. You have to wait for it. Here's the patience and the faith of the saints. Now, I see this word patience, right? I'm thinking of the scripture in Baruch. Let's read that. Baruch, the fourth chapter, around it. Now, this is a powerful scripture right here. Baruch, the fourth chapter, around the, uh, the 25th verse. Let me show you what real reparations is all about. Uh, Baruch 4 and 25. My children, who's the Lord's children? The Israelites. Suffer patiently the wrath that is come upon you from the Heavenly Father. That's why we're on the bottom. That's why we're treated like shit by all the other nations, including the so-called white man in his own kingdom. The Lord told us to suffer patiently the wrath that is come upon you from the Heavenly Father. For thine enemy have persecuted thee, but shortly, shortly, thou shalt see his destruction. We see it now. We see that this man is going down. We see that his society is crumbling. The infrastructure of his society is crumbling. He's got all these problems, okay, that he really can't solve, all right? He's, he's near the brink of, of nuclear war, all right? Have these people not see the news, how close we are to nuclear war, okay? This thing with Russia is heating up, and not just Russia, all the other nations, okay, the Chinese, all right, the uh, um, the so-called Arabs. Okay, we're very close to World War Three, man. All right, and that World War Three symbolizes the destruction of Esau's kingdom. So, reading on, it says, "For thine enemy have persecuted thee," and what's an example of that? Slavery and their their system. Their system alone is persecution. You got all these different contracts that binds us to this devil the birth certificate which the birth certificate is a document of slavery I, I didn't hear Tariq Nasheed say 
say uh, the abolishment of the birth certificate. Why didn't he say that? I'm pretty sure he knows that the birth certificate is a document of slavery. So if you, you're talking about reparations as money, what about the, the, the birth certificate? It's still in full effect. And it's prima facie evidence. All right, that's a Latin term on its first face. It's prima facie evidence that we are slaves to the so-called white man, Esau Edom. The fact that they, the bankers own us through these different contracts, the first one being a birth certificate. I didn't hear Tariq Nasheed call for the abolishment of, a birth, of the birth certificate. But he's standing up there on the stage talking about some reparations. <laughs> you got to start with the very first document that shows that we're chattel, that we're, slave, that we're slaves. The birth certificate. Who owns the birth certificate? Huh? <laughs> anyway, and, and see, the thing is, when Yahweh Shai comes, he's going to liberate us totally. All right? He's going to totally liberate us from the clutches of Esau. Then we're going to get our reparations. That's why the Lord said his people are foolish, man. For thine enemy have persecuted thee, but shortly thou shalt see his destruction, which we're seeing now. Now listen good, here it comes. And shall tread upon his neck. And it literally means that. We're going to stomp on his neck, like he stomped on our necks, the necks of our forefathers. He's stomping on our necks now through his, through his system. Okay? And the word system means pit. He's stomping on our necks. Every day he's stomping on our necks. Every day he's, he's, he's uh, oppressing us with his bad food. You know, chemicals in the food. The food, the food is not even real anymore. And we have, we have, we're, we're the ones that have to eat it. And then we get sick from it. And we drop dead from it. Okay? He's, he's, he's uh, persecuting us with his, his different contracts. Like I said, the birth certificate, the, the driver's license. Whatever, whenever you want to do something, you have to get permission from this man in the form of a license. You have to get what is called a license. And when you look up the term license, L-I-C, this is from the book Vultures and Eagles Clothing by Lynn Meredith. See if you can find that book, Vultures in Eagle's Cloven by Lynn Meredith. In the book, uh, it tells you that license, when you spell the word license, L-I-C, means to entrap or to snare. So this devil created these licenses to trap us into giving up our rights, giving up our freedom for his, for his privileges in the form of a license. And you don't even get it for free. You don't even get this man's privilege. It is you, you've given up your rights, your God-given rights, your unalienable rights. All right, you've given that up for privileges from this man, from this devil. And a privilege, anytime it can be revoked, anytime, for whatever reason. So what are you talking about, reparations? The real reparation starts when you have the man that enslaves you when you have him in slavery. You see? And this is what I'm reading here. My children suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from the heavenly father. For thine enemy have persecuted thee. But shortly thou shalt, thou shalt see his destruction and shalt tread upon his neck. That's real reparations, man. Okay? And we need an army to do that. And guess what? That's what Yahweh Shai and the angels are coming with. Well, the, Yahweh Shai is coming with an army, an army of angels, to take this man down. Let's go back to Tariq and listen to listen to his doggerel. Look that word up <laughs> of reparations. Give yourselves a round of applause. And all of this is entertainment, man. Meanwhile, this guy is making all kinds of all kinds of so-called money, which I'm pretty sure he's smart enough to take some of those Federal Reserve notes and invest in something like you said earlier, we need something tangible, pretty sure he's doing that. And if he ain't, then he's a, he's a damn jackass because he should know that those Federal Reserve notes are being devalued by the second. And, 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 and 
in a, in a little while, a short while, they'll no longer be in circulation. They'll be worthless. Now, family, when we talk about reparations, we get the same seven rebuttals from the dominant society, and we need to know how to address their rebuttals when we talk about what we need to get as far as reparations. The first thing that they say is, well, wouldn't reparations be divisive? Wouldn't that make people in the dominant society not like you? Are you here to be liked by the dominant society? Tina Turner told us, what's love got to do with it? We're trying to get our money. We're already divided, but they control our resources. So we want them to... Not, not just your resources, they control you. Like I said, let's start with the birth certificate. You should be telling these people that the birth certificate needs to be abolished. Huh? And start there. <laughs> but the only way that can be enforced is if you yourself have an army. And we ain't got no army, man. The only thing we have is, those of us that have this truth, that is, the only thing we have is the understanding of these scriptures and the, the understanding that Yahweh Bashim Yahushai is behind us. That, that there's a power in heaven, Yahweh Shai, and the angels that are rooting for us. There's a, a power in heaven, Yahweh Shai, who is coming to gather his elect from the four corners of the earth and to give them the kingdom. Wait a minute, Yahweh Shai said, fear not, little flock. Let's get that. That's another example of real reparations, what Yahweh Shai said here. It is right here. This is the book of Luke 12 and 32. It says, Fear not, these are the words of Yahweh Shai. As a matter of fact, um, uh, as you see these words written in red, Yahweh Shai actually said these words. Luke 12 and 31, But rather seek ye the kingdom of the Heavenly Father. Now the majority of those people in the audience being wooed by the uh, uh, speech of Tariq Nasheed, the eloquent speech, and he and he does sound eloquent, but most of most of what he said, if not all of it, is is, is worthless. It's garbage when you compare it to what the heavenly Father is saying. It's straight garbage. Okay. Yahweh Shai told us to seek the kingdom of the heavenly Father. That's what we should be seeking for, because that's what's coming upon this planet Earth. That's what Yahweh Shai is coming to bring. But rather seek ye the kingdom of the heavenly father and all these things shall be added unto you. Everything that we lost to this devil and the other nations, we're going to get it in manifold, manifold. That's what the scriptures tell us. Then we're going to get them. <laughs> you can't beat that, man. That's real reparations. That's what's really going to repair us. Repair the, the suffering that we went through. Repair the wounds, the wound of slavery that we endured and our forefathers, that's what's going to repair us. Having them in slavery like they had us. As a matter of fact, let me quickly get the scripture. We're going to come back to Luke. Uh, 2 Thessalonians 1 and 6. Now check this out. 2 Thessalonians 1 and 6. Seeing it is a righteous thing with the Heavenly Father to recompense. That's payback, people recompense tribulation to them that trouble you there you go payback recompense tribulation to them that trouble you what the heck you think that means enslave them that enslaved us i read that to you in revelation 13 9 and 10 he that leadeth in the captivity shall go in the captivity okay let's read the book of colossians the third chapter the 25th verse and by the way, that's the good news. And everybody can't receive good news. The word gospel means good news. Everybody can't receive this gospel. Everybody can't receive this good news. It's only for the nation of Israel, beginning with the elect. Colossians 3 and 25. But he that doeth wrong. Now this man did us wrong. There's no doubt about that. Okay. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he have done, and there is no respect of persons. So this man did wrong. 
boy did he do wrong. So he's going to receive for the wrong which he have done. Okay? That's how it works with the Heavenly Father. All right? Now, many of our people just don't believe that. Let's go back to Luke, Luke 12 and 31. But rather seek ye the kingdom of the heavenly father and all these things shall be added unto you. There you go. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So Esau's kingdom is going to be brought down, which we're in right now, and it's going to go out in, by fire. Okay. The fire of the nuclear missiles and the fire of the chariots brought on by the Lord. His kingdom is going to go down and our kingdom is going to come up. That's how this thing works. Now in our kingdom, we're going to have all the other nations, including Esau, Edom, as slaves. Thus saith the Lord. That's real reparations. Not that crap that Tariq Nasheed is babbling about. Okay? Let's get back to it resources so we want them to divide our money and give it back to us because we're owed a debt as foundational black americans we're owed a debt as foundational black americans what about the debt that you owe the heavenly father through his only begotten son he ain't talking about paying that debt okay wait a minute how wish i paid his debt to the father that's why the father chastised him, because he owed a debt. And he paid his debt. He manned up and paid his debt. Guess, guess what he received for that? He's now second in command underneath the Heavenly Father. He sits at the right-hand side of the Heavenly Father. As a matter of fact, the Heavenly Father said to him, All power is given unto me. Let's read that. Because our Lord paid his debt. And that's what we're, we that's in this knowledge and this truth, we're paying our debt. Okay, all power, all power is given these are the words of our Lord after he paid his debt matthew twenty eight and seventeen, and when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. <laughs> Now, this is right after he was risen from the grave, okay? And Yahweh came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. That's what he got for paying his debt. How about that? Okay? Let's read the book of Micah. And that's what we're going to get. We're going to get power, man. We are going to get power beyond the our wildest dreams, man. If we simply believe in Yahweh Bashim Yahusha, we're going to get that power, man. Uh, Micah 7 and 9. Let's read that. Now, this is the attitude every Israelite man should have that is in this faith. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him. Right, the hell that we're going through in this society underneath Esau. Micah said he, his attitude was, I'll bet, I'll deal with it because I deserve it anyway. Why? Because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause. See, Tariq Nasheed has not told the people why they're in that condition to begin with. That's where the prophets of the Lord come in. We're telling you why you're in a low condition because of the wickedness of our forefathers, which we are our forefathers. The Heavenly Father punished us. The Heavenly Father brought a series of curses upon us. The Heavenly Father brought, brought a bid upon us, which we have to do. We have to do that bid. Until the time is up, then the Heavenly Father is going to turn it around. Well, let's read it. Let's keep reading. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him. See? Until he plead my cause. See? And he's doing that now. He's pleading our cause now. And execute judgment for me. And that's exactly what he's going to do. The ultimate form of judgment that he's going to execute is when he sends his son, Yahweh Shai, back with the angels to destroy this man's kingdom. And it's only going to take Yahweh Shai one hour. That's 60 minutes to destroy this man's kingdom. Okay? Until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me, he will bring me forth to the light. Has he not done that? Has he not bring us to the light? Do we not know the truth now? Of what's really going on? 
<laughs> Something that Esau tried to hide from us. The Heavenly Father led us to the light, man, through his only begotten son, through the men that he set up on the planet Earth, the teachers. Okay? He will bring me forth to the light, and I shall behold his righteousness. You see? So we're going to get that power, man. Let's play a little more of uh, Mr. Tariq Nasheed. <laughs> and then we're going to go through these scriptures real quick, and that'll be the video. A debt is foundational black Americans. Well, we owe a debt. He's talking about the debt Esau owes us. And indeed, Esau does owe us a debt, but that debt won't be able to be collected until Esau's power is destroyed. While Esau is in power, Esau don't give a fuck about you and his debt that he owes to you. Beginning with the top banking families. They don't give a fuck. And they're not supposed to. They're in their kingdom. Wait a minute, I have another script to share with you. Lamentations. You know, Masashi Miyamoto, the greatest samurai that ever lived, he had uh, 21 principles that he lived by. And he put it to paper right an, a week before he died. It was called the Dokodo. Dokodo. Now, one of those principles, I believe was number one, was accept things as they really are. Accept things as they really are. And the, and the truth is, Esau don't owe you a goddamn thing. He's in his kingdom. The Lord set him over us to punish us for our wickedness. That's the truth. So now the Lord is getting ready to kick him off the power structure and set us up on the power structure. All right? That's the deal. Okay? Uh, let's get the book of Lamentations, the fourth chapter. And by the way, Misashi Miyamoto was a Jake. Okay? There's reports that said he looked like a so-called black man of Japanese persuasion. Lamentations, the fourth chapter, the uh, 21st verse. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwellest in the land of Uz. Right now we're in their kingdom. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. What is the cup? The curses that we went through. Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, beginning at the, the 16th verse. All those curses are now going to come up on Esau and Edom. You can read that in the book of Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter, around the 7th verse. Let's see if that's not so. Deuteronomy 30 and 7. It is right here. And the Lord thy God, his name is Yahweh, will put all these curses upon thine enemies. Now, if you go in the book of Psalm, the 83rd chapter, it gives you a list of our enemies. It starts with the tabernacles of Esau, Edom. So all the curses that we went through, right, all the hell that we caught underneath this man, all those curses are going to come upon him. Now, I don't know how the hell he's going to have to deal with it, but he's going to have to deal with it. Okay? I'm not concerned about that, how he's going to deal with it. I couldn't give a shit. I just know he's going to have to deal with it. That's all I know. Okay? <laughs> and the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. You see, this is a promise from the Heavenly Father. His name is Yahweh. Now there's a scripture where it says it's impossible for him to lie. There's a scripture where it speaks about the immutability of his counsel. When you look up the word immutability, it means it doesn't change. The Heavenly Father himself don't change. As it is written, I change not. That's the Heavenly Father. He said, look, I don't change. So what he said all those years ago still stands. Okay? Then it goes on to say, Deuteronomy 30 and 8, And thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord. There you go. And do all his commandments which I command thee this day. That's our future, man. We're talking about some goddamn reparations. He's just babbling, man. All right? As it is written, the simple believeth every word <laughs> hold on I think I might have had a scripture that I might have been holding okay yeah Lamentations the fourth chapter 
And the 21st verse, Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwellest in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass through unto thee, and thou shalt be drunken, and shall make thyself naked. So Esau is about to drink that cup. The punishment of thine iniquity. See? So what we're going through is a punishment, and the Lord used Esau to punish us and all the other nations. This is why King David wisely said, Deliver me from the wicked, that's Esau, Edom, Malachi 1 and 4. Deliver me from the wicked, which is thy sword. So Esau is the sword of the Lord on the left-hand side. And the Lord used him to punish us for our wickedness, for our rebellion against him. Okay? That's the deal, man. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. And that's why the Bible is called a comforter. Because when you hear this, it's supposed to comfort you. Now you know why you're going through what you're going through. And you know that there's an end to it. And you know that the people that afflicted you, you're going to get to afflict them. That's called justice, man. Okay? That's real reparations. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. What do you think that means? Slavery. That's why we came into slavery in the first place. That was a punishment from the Heavenly Father for disobeying his laws, his statutes, his commandments. He gave us the contract. The contract was, here's my laws, my statutes, my commandments. I want you to follow them as my chosen people. If you don't, I'm going to bring holy hell down on you. And that's exactly what he did. One of the greatest examples was slavery, that cargo slave trade. That thing was horrific, man. But that was a punishment from the Heavenly Father. And you, when you try to tell our people that, the majority of them ain't trying to hear that. Nah, my God would never do that. My, my Jesus would never. This is why the Lord said his people are sottish children. Sottish means stupid. That's why a, a person like that, you just got to forget them. They're, like the scripture I read, Jeremiah the 5th chapter, they have revolted and gone. They're gone. They have no understanding. That, that's in Isaiah the 1st chapter. From the... From the <laughs> I have to get that, man. <laughs> Isaiah the 1st... <laughs> Isaiah the 1st chapter, what is it? The beginning of the 5th verse? Yeah, Isaiah... Well, hold up, Isaiah 1 and 4. Ah, sinful nation, there you go. A people laden with iniquity, wickedness, a seed of evildoers. And that's why two-thirds of the Lord's people are going to be cut off and die. We only care about the one-third because this nation is so wicked. The average Jake out there is just so wicked. He's saturated with wickedness, okay? A seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. See, yeah, he gets mad. He's talking about God is all love. The one you know is God. He gets mad, man. He gets angry. He gets upset. Especially when his people are behaving like jackasses. <laughs> they have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They have gone back. They have gone away backward. Talking about some reparations. Standing up there in a monkey suit. Looking like a cheap knockoff of the so-called white man, you hollering about some reparations? <laughs> when you ain't telling the people what real reparations is. I'm showing you what real reparations is, what the Heavenly Father have said. Okay? Why should ye be stricken any more? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. There you go. From the sole of the foot. Even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. Yeah, the wound of slavery, the wound of oppression. That's what our people are suffering. When you look up that term putrefying sore, that's a sore that gets worse and worse. So reparations is not going to solve your problems, man. Reparations from the so-called white man, that is. That's not going to solve your problem. He's only going to take it back. How many times have the so-called white man give you something, then he takes it back? What do you think these so-called civil rights is all about? That's rights that you get from the so-called white man. Any right they give you, they can revoke it. They can take it back. That's what they do. You know how they do. <laughs> but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores, they have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment until now. What's the real ointment? This knowledge, this truth, that's the healing balm, the healing ointment that's going to heal your mind. Now you know why you're in this condition. Now you know you're going to get out of it. And now you know what you're going to get on the back end of it. Okay? So, again, 
Here comes that healing ointment that we read the last scripture. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. Uh oh, so it's dead turn now. It's dead turn to go through what we went through, but with them it's going to be worse. It's going to be worse. Okay? I don't know how the hell they're going to deal with it, but they're going to have to deal with it. Like I said, that's not my concern, how they're going to deal with it. All I know is they're going to have to deal with it. Okay, we went through it. They're going to go through it. They're not going to be unpunished, like it says in Jeremiah 49 and 12. So let's listen some more. A debt is foundational black Americans. Foundational black Americans. Number one, we're not black. We're different shades of brown. I'm looking at Tariq Nasheed. His suit looks to be black, but his skin is brown. And we're not Americans. Does this guy know that the term America goes back to Amadigo Vespucci? When this place was uh, called America by the cartographer Martin Walsemuller, who labeled this place called America, which in the Bible is known as Babylon the Great. So we're not black Americans. There's no such thing. That doesn't exist. That's a made-up, man-made concept. That's not what the Heavenly Father created. The Heavenly Father never created no black American. The Heavenly Father created Hebrew Israelites of the respective tribes. So right there, his, his rhetoric fails. Foundational black Americans. What the hell is that? <laughs> anyway, let's get to these scriptures. I'm only going to um, I'm only going to go through the quick ones. Maybe I'll do another video because I'm already over an hour. I didn't no way intended for this video to get that long. But matter of fact, I'm just going to read one scripture. Well, you know, I'll read two. The last two, because the other, the, the first two were a little long. Isaiah 57. I changed my mind. I'll, I'll just read Jeremiah. One scripture will do it, man. Jeremiah 30. And the other scriptures, you, you see, write them down, okay? Write them down. You, you see them on the screen. And maybe in the future, I'll do another video. Maybe a part two to this. Maybe. But I've already made the point, Okay. Jeremiah 30 and 15. That was easy work. Jeremiah 30 and 15. Let's, let's end with that. Jeremiah 30 and 15. Why criest thou for thine affliction? That, <laughs> see, that's why I chose that scripture. That's our people, man. That's what Tariq Nasheed is doing. He's crying for his affliction. We want reparations, white man. You going to give us some reparations. We want reparations. Why criest thou for thine affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thine iniquity. That's why I told you earlier in the lesson, we owe the Heavenly Father through his only begotten Son. We owe a debt to the Heavenly Father because we sinned against him. So let's pay our debts. And we're going to get the reward that the only begotten Son got which is power from the Heavenly Father. Power beyond our wildest dreams, man. What's the confirmation of that? The Son of the Heavenly Father. Look at where he is. <laughs> Why criest thou for thine affliction? Yeah, you could stand up all day in that cheap monkey suit babbling about some goddamn reparations. But we that know the truth, we understand what real reparations is. And we, we have patience. We'll wait for it. Like Micah said. Why criest thou for thine affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable. <laughs> for the multitude of thine iniquity. Because thy sins were increased. I have done these things unto thee. Yeah, like setting up the so-called white man over us. Setting up his system that oppresses us. The Heavenly Father gave the so-called white man the power to oppress us. That's his sword. You know, bringing our forefathers into slavery, which we are our forefathers in those cargo slave ships. Okay? Who do you think gave the so-called white man the power to do what he did? The Heavenly Father did for our wickedness. I just read it. Let's keep reading. Therefore, all they that devoured thee shall be devoured. So now Esau devoured us. 
So he's going to be devoured. He took everything from us, including our nationality. He's walking around with our nationality and he gave us the title of Black American. And here's this fool, Tariq Nasheed, standing up there proudly proclaiming that we're foundational Black Americans. No, we're not. We're Hebrew Israelites. We're foundational Hebrew Israelites of the respective tribes. <laughs> he can take his rhetoric and shove it up his ass, man. Straight up and down. Okay? That's what he can do. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. So the, the people that devoured us, Esau and the other nations, they're going to be devoured. That's how this thing works. And all thine adversaries, every one of them shall go into captivity. See? That's real reparations. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil. There you go. And all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. For I will restore health unto thee. That's us. The Heavenly Father said he's going to restore health unto our nation. We're going to be the gods that we once were in the past. Don't you know we were gods, man? Here it is, Tariq Nasheed standing up there like a little dog begging the so-called white man to acknowledge us and give us reparations when we were gods. We were gods with power, man. Psalm 82 and 6. <laughs> and that's exactly what we're going to get back. We're going to get that godlike status back. And we're going to get it through the Heavenly Father, through His only begotten Son. For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds. Yeah, the wound of, of slavery, the wound of oppression, the wound of, of the last hired, the first fire, the wound of being the joke of the planet Earth. The wound of, be, of, of being mocked by every nation on the planet Earth. The Lord is going to make it right, man. He's going to heal us. Okay? This is what he said. Jeremiah 30 and 17. And we can bank on his words. Okay? Like he said, he's not a man that he should lie. Numbers 23 and 19. It's just that the majority of our people don't know the words of the Heavenly Father. That's why Jer Jeremiah 4 and 22, my people are foolish, they're sottish children, they have not known me. That's what the Heavenly Father said, which means they don't know his words. And that's where the, the true teachers come in. That's where the apostles, the prophets, the true teachers come in. Okay? For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. Reparations, real reparations. Because they call thee an outcast, saying, this is Zion. Whom no man seeketh after. Right. We became the butt of everyone's joke. Especially the so-called black man. Is, is the reparations of Esau going to fix that? Hell fucking no. But the reparations of the Heavenly Father. Through his only begotten son. Will fix everything. Alright. So on that note. I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully you were edified by this video. And it's on to the next one.